Hi, I'm Michaela, an instructor with TechWise Academy. We are going to be using Scratch Junior today. Scratch Junior is a free app that combines creativity and coding. It can be used to make animations, stories, and even games. We're going to be using it today to work on backgrounds, and we're going to answer the questions, how can I switch to a background? Why would I need to switch to a different background? Can I make my own background? Can I change the backgrounds? Can I customize it? All of those questions will be answered today. On Scratch Junior, I have a project that's already started. And in this project, I want the car to drive across the scene and then change the scene. So I'll put it in full screen, click the green flag. There goes my car. And now it's on the second page. And I know it's on the second scene or the setting because the car is actually on the bottom of the page now, whereas on scene one, it was not. So if I want this to be a little bit more obvious because this was quite hard to tell where the car actually was. And I want it to look like it was driving from a neighborhood to a beach. This code right now, while I'm on the code screen, says that when I click the green flag, my car should drive 16 steps to the right. This green flag, so this very green flag, is going to run this code as well. And it will wait for 30 seconds, not quite seconds, because Scratch Junior has a different method of time. And then it will change background to be background two. If I want this background to not be a white square, I would go up to the background icon, which is the green grass and the blue sky. And under this line, there is a gray line right here. All of these come default with Scratch Junior. They're the, what I call the background library. So I'll pick one that looks like a neighborhood, suburbs, perfect. And I'm going to hit the check mark. But now I have a problem. My car looks like it's driving over this tree and I don't particularly want it to do that. You can edit the background by first going to the background icon, selecting the one that you want. And then instead of just hitting the check mark, we're going to open the paint editor. And this is the paint editor. I hit the paintbrush on it before I hit the check mark. A couple of tools that Scratch Junior offers. I can doodle on the background if I want to. I can change the thickness. I can delete things and move things from over here. So if I clicked on the squiggle line, I could pick the thickness of my line. Let's do red. And I can squiggle all over the screen. This part would show up in my background. I don't particularly want it there, so I am going to undo it and have it go away. Same thing, I could add a circle. So instead of picking yellow, I'll pick blue. And I could just click and drag myself a circle on the screen. I can even fill in this circle if I wanted to. Let's fill it in white. So I picked the fill can, I picked the color I wanted, and then I'll pick inside of the circle. And now my circle has been filled in with white. Same thing for square and triangle. On this side, we have some different options. With the arrow or the mouse pointer, I can click on an object and drag it around. Some of the items do move as a whole, so I can't move just this door because when I try, it's gonna move the entire house. I'm gonna move, undo that. If I want to delete this tree, because this is the tree that's causing me not to see my car entirely, I could move it. But I like having the neighborhood feel like there's more houses, so the, this house got covered. So I don't really want that option. I'm going to use the option to cut it, or remove it, or delete it. So I've clicked on my scissors, and then now it's gone. Excellent. I can take my rotating tool, click on it, and then turn anything I want. I can flip this tree so that its trunk is in the air if I wanted to do that. This one is a stamp. This one's going to make copies of whatever object is selected. So with the stamp selected, I can click on a tree and now I have two trees. If I go back to select on the stamp again, now I have three trees. And I don't need those there, so I'm going to undo those. Perfect. With this camera, I could draw out a shape, take my camera selected, I could Oh, click on the circle and then use this camera to take a picture and whatever the camera saw is what would show up in this circle. I do not need a circle there so I will undo that. And then lastly we can change how the background looks by using the fill can. We can change the colors. So I've selected the fill can and you know it's selected because it has an orange box around it. Let's say in this world the grass is blue and the sky is green. So with the green color and the paint can selected, 
I clicked on this guy, now I have a green sky and blue grass. But for the sake of this example, I just wanted to delete the tree. So now that I'm happy with this one, I'm going to hit the check mark. If I go back to all the backgrounds, now you'll notice that there's something up here. That's because I customized my very own background. These below the line are the ones that Scratch Jr. has in their library for you to choose. And then the ones up here are the ones that have been customized. If I want my very own background, I could click on the blank one and then the paintbrush and I could go through and I could make maybe a smiley face. And I would use this so if I was making a race or some kind of game and I wanted the player to know that they've won the game, I could have it maybe my race car has to hit a finish line. And when the race car bumps into the finish line, I want it to show this background. I could have it when the finish line is bumped, switch over to background too. So if I hit check mark, it has changed my background. If I want to change it back to a blank background, I could do that. I could hit this one and then just the check mark and it would be fine. But since I don't want that, I want it to be this one. While we are in here though, you can delete backgrounds if there's maybe too many of them or you don't want it or don't want to be confused. Press and hold down on it or tap and hold. And then when it starts to wiggle, the X will show up and then you can delete them. So I'm okay with this being my background. Perfect, I'm gonna start my car back over here. Beautiful. And then this one, I want my background to be the beach. I want it to look like it had driven from the neighborhood to the beach. So I changed my background ever so, or a lot of it. And then now, if I were to run the code again, I start from page number one and I put it in full screen. Perfect, now my car looks like it's leaving the neighborhood and it showed up on the beach. Excellent, that's exactly what I wanted it to do. Now I could go through and change the background with these buttons down at the bottom, but I like that Scratch Jr. can do it automatically through code. So if, let's say that my story continues and I want this to change automatically into a nighttime. Maybe they have spent all day at the beach and now it's nighttime at the beach. If I wanted to do that, if I go into red, this is where this block would be. Right now I can only switch backgrounds to background one because I'm already on background two and it knows that it's two because two has an orange box and the two is filled in. So I can't go to another background that isn't one because it doesn't exist. So I need to make that background first. In order to do that, I'm going to add another scene on the right hand side by clicking the plus. And when I do that, my character showed up as Tick. Sometimes it'll be Scratch Cat, depends on which version of Scratch Jr. you're using. So I'm going to press and hold and delete Tick because I don't need Tick. In fact, I actually want this exact car. I don't want to have to change the size of it or the color. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this car from the character menu and drag it over to background three and it popped it into background three, even in the exact same spot. So I now could go through, if I'm on background number two, now I have the option to go through and change it to background one or background three. It does have the number at the top so that you can see which one it's going to. But I want this to be a night sky, so I'm gonna to go to my backgrounds and I'm gonna find me a night beach. This works. Perfect. So now if I wanted this car to drive all the way into scene three without me having to hit those little arrows, these little arrows down here, if I wanted it to do that through code, I could go through and I'm going to use the green flag. You don't have to use the green flag, it's just what I'm using, but you could use a when character is bumped, when they're tapped on, there's lots of different events that you could use for that. This car I want to drive all the way over here, so past this surfboard, and I know one step is not going to be enough, but if I click on the grid, this shows me that my car is at space four going this way, and it's four spaces tall. That is where Scratch Jr. recognizes that this character is right now. So if I wanted to go all the way over to 20, I need to see how many steps are in between, or how many steps I'm going to need to take. So 20 minus four is 16. So instead of one step, I'm actually gonna have it drive 16 steps, and then I'm going to have it change to background three. If I take my grid off and I go back to the start, this is how my code works now. I now have my car leaving automatically. It's now at the beach. They've waited for just a little bit so that they enjoy their beach time. And now it's on nighttime beach. Their day is over. A couple of things that I want to point out about the backgrounds. 
they can be rearranged or reordered to be in whatever order and you don't have to change the the, the number of the code down here it does it automatically so it now knows this beach is number one I can reorganize those again you do have the option to add a fourth one but once you add four you cannot add any more so if I want to delete this one maybe I don't need this anymore I can press and hold on it and delete it and then and now the plus button will show up again showing that I can add a new page or a new setting an option to enhance or make the backgrounds even better we can add titles. Titles are used by this ABC button at the very top. And I use titles for a couple of reasons. Sometimes like in this situation where I'm making a little story, this might be chapter one. Or if I'm making a game that has different levels, sometimes I change the background so that if I'm running a race, maybe my background is green and now in the second race it's red something like that but I also like to add titles to the background so that it kind of is a little bit more obvious it definitely tells the player or the reader what chapter or what level they're on in order to do that I would press the ABC's and I could type in chapter one perfect these A's are going to make it different sizes so I'll make it about a medium size and this paint can is going to change the color of it I'm fine with black and then I could drag this over, I could delete it too by just pressing and holding on it, but I could drag it over just like we do other characters. And now I know that this is chapter one. Sometimes maybe this is the end of my story and I like to add the end. Let's make it white so it shows up a little bit better. Move it away from the moon. The end. This is the end of their beach day, the end of their beach adventure. Perfect. So we've talked a little bit about backgrounds today. This is how we add backgrounds. This is where the backgrounds from Scratch Junior live. These are the customized backgrounds. This is how we can paint our own background using the paint brush. The editing tools. And we go back and change that. We've also talked about how to reorder character or backgrounds. We've talked about how we get one character, so this car, into background number four just by dragging it. We've talked about titles. We've also talked about how do we get it to switch automatically, maybe for a level or a different setting or a different place in the story. We've covered a lot about backgrounds today. And so I hope that you have learned a lot about backgrounds in Scratch Junior. I hope that you create wonderful projects on Scratch Junior and that you check out TechWise Academy for more videos and tutorials on Scratch Junior. Bye.